Okay, right, so I'm starting um, a discussion about dictionaries from the 17th century. Uh, it's from the well, actually, it starts earlier, but I have to give some background. Uh, so the dictionary I'm going to be focusing on is 1694. But to give you some um, better understanding, um, the ladies' dictionary um, was um, sort of only possible to be born um, or produced um, because of some dictionaries earlier in the 17th century. Um, and so some of the earlier 17th century dictionaries, it, it, this is in English, by the way, um, were often appealing to women as readers. And um, so there's, um, Kevin, did you add one of the, uh, did you add Catherine's title page or not? Okay. So a lot of these um, early to mid 17th century dictionaries had um, title pages that were voluminous. Um, and they started, they, they went through a period of you know, brevity and then huge long lists of everybody that they wanted to read them and all of the texts that they wanted to um, pr promote. Um, so there are a number of texts from the 17th century that specifically talked about ladies and gentlewomen. And by the way, they are separate um, groups. A lady and a gentlewoman are different. Um, but lexicographers specifically were Robert Claudry, John Bolivar, Henry Cochran, Thomas Blunt, John Percy, um, those are the most famous ones. Um, and Henry Cochran, I just have a photocopy of it if anybody wants to see it later. Um, but it's the English Dictionary, or Interpreter of Hard English Words, um, enabling as well ladies and gentlewomen. And it's actually quite important that ladies and gentlewomen come first. And that young scholars, clerks, merchants, and also uh, strangers of any nation to be Understanding the more difficult authors already printed, it gets worse and worse. So if we have um, eye issues, just give up. Um, but so there is a spate of these throughout the 17th century. Um, so it was becoming clear that women, as readers of dictionaries, were desired, um, and also the, uh, women as purchasers of dictionaries. It's a lot easier to find out who was buying them than it was to find out who was reading them. Um, so it's, it's really not very easy to figure out um, who a reader was necessarily. But there are some subscription lists um, and some you know, people who were said, who said, I would buy this, I will buy this copy, I'll buy that copy, I'll buy two copies. Now that doesn't mean that they read it either, that doesn't mean they owned it. Um, so in the 17th century, women were becoming more and more literate, more and more educated. At the same time, there was an increase in um, um, social mobility. So women got educated throughout the 17th century. Towards the 18th century, there was a greater um, um, sort of fluidity in some class structures. And one of the fallouts of that, though, is that as women became, or families became a little bit more um, free with their money and time, women were encouraged to go back into the home and the domestic sphere. Um, and then, so currently, there's this movement towards uh, a term or an idea called sensibility. So women were um, intellectually and emotionally fragile. They needed to go home and take care of themselves and, you know, this is great for the family couch. They needed to become um, more involved in the home. Um, and so the kinds of learnedness that women had experienced um, during most of the 17th century kind of dropped off in the 18th. Um, so what we end up having though is that uh, we've got more education, uh, more money, and more things in print, and more free time. So what we get then is uh, women being able to buy and peruse books that are not necessarily devotional in nature and not necessarily useful um, in nature. So there wouldn't be like 
um, a text on uh, history or a text on Latin, but there would actually be resources like articles in magazines, um, there were broadsheets, there were romances, and romances in this time are very different from romances what we know today. There were novels, um, and I'm getting to the book that I'm talking about, which is the ladies' picture. And this was kind of fun and salacious and interesting and exciting. Um, and like most dictionaries of this time, it was what we would call plagiarized. Um, it brought in, so, uh, yes. okay. so this is um, the, the dictionary being a general, general entertainment for the fair sex. Um, the work never attempted before in English. That's actually kind of true, uh, because what it does is brings together a quasi-dictionary um, and a reference uh, book. So you know, I'll talk later about this structure and the development of the entries, but it really is kind of not before done. Um, first of all, um, it's, let's see, do we have NH? No, the author's, um, the author is NH, so it's not clear, I don't think it's necessarily been established who specifically it was, but um, it's printed for John Button, who was very prolific as a publisher and also, well, I think he was a poet as well. So he's, he's writing and publishing things. And sometimes I think, like, there was one year where he published something like 60 some titles. So clearly he was getting help. Um, and one um, argument is that NH was um, somebody else, or he appropriated NH. He uh, used NH as sort of this umbrella term for himself and some helpers. Um, so um, this is the uh, what the cover looks like. Um, so what we end up having though is um, a book like this, and it's, so it says it's for this the fair sex. On the other hand, um, I don't think I have. Um, the, okay, so the um, dedication page is ladies, gentlewomen, and others um, of the fair sex. And then it also talks about later on men. Um, so, you know, he's kind of spreading a wide net. Um, so, what I wanted to also talk about then is once we start uh, looking at the content of this, um, we notice that it's not really for women, or at least it's for women who want to be attracted to men. Um, so, um, let's see. And it also means that these others receive scant attention. And these others are just allegedly anybody who's involved in cookery or surgery or house, you know, house maybes or you know, these. But the literacy rate of those kinds of people would be very low. So it's unlikely it would have been there. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, some of the pages and some of the uh, content. So and that's why I have the handouts, because this stuff is really hard to read. You see what I mean? Um, not only is it a black letter, but it's not a really good quality of uh, duplication. Um, so what I have here is um, this should be part of the end of A, um, and this should be artificial beauty. Um, and what I think is ironic is that because of the cobbling together of so many sources, we have artificial beauty as um, going against God's will, and um, this is an inappropriate thing for women to do. Um, women should, you know, if they do this, um, they wear, uh, you know, different raiments, or they apply, you know, patches um, or uh, cosmetics. 
they are no longer in God's image. So there's this kind of weird patchwork of um, uh, sources. So we've got some kinds of strange you know, religious text, um, but at the same time, when we get into the letter B, um, we have, um, sure this is, yes. So we have some on this next page. Um, we have the word bought, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's pimp and etc. So then there's a whole long discussion of what laws do, um, what they, their purposes, how they function. Um, so if this is actually for ladies and gentle women, um, it's not appropriate for her. Um, so it's, it's very, it's, it's kind of a fun thing. And it's, you know, it's a ladies dictionary. And um, you can sort of say, oh, I'm, you know, it's like kind of reading the book with the comic book on the inside. Um, so you've got the formal, appropriate work, you know, with the title, but then you've got this really salacious content. Um, so, um, let's see, there's another one about, um, let's see. I have the, there's a couple of um, words that are just absolutely, oh, great. So, for example, of, one thing that kind of leads you to believe that it's not necessarily for ladies is that later on, um, there is seemingly a, a very interesting um, connection or you know, a desire to engage with words that have to do with uh, men's sexual relations that really don't have anything to do with women. So we have buttery, cataract, ganymede, hydus, and sodomy. And so again, this is seemingly you know, oh yes, this is the ladies dictionary, but it's not quite the ladies dictionary. Um, this is not something that ladies would read um, for anything but just sheer fun and pleasure. Um, okay, so we have God, and then um, you can see how long God is. Um, don't, yeah. <laughs> um, so then we're getting to. Um, Beauty. So there's beauty, um, and beauty runs some almost like 20 pages. Um, obviously, if, if you can't read this, you may be able to read it in your handouts. Um, but there's many kinds of beauty. Um, there is um, there's the artificial beauty, but then it's contrasted with beautifying. Um, all kinds of body parts, um, how to be beautiful, um, recipes for cosmetics, um, and this gets into what the um, dictionary isn't, which is alphabetical. So, for example, you get, um, I'm not even sure, there's um, bod and then body, I think, and then beauty in general, and then there's all kinds of different kinds of beauty. Um, and then there's, um, let's see, it's a lot easier for me to see this um, than you. Um, but one of the things, oh, here's the thing. Um, what are the last pages? Always it's hard to read. Um, one of the last pages um, is about um, breasts, particularly sagging breasts, <laughs> and how to prevent them from appearing sagging. Um, so there's a body, you know, there's a section on women's bodies, and so how you, uh, a woman, would uh, be more pleasing to a man um, by, you know, some sort of you know, 17th century, like, you know, series of, like, ropes and pulleys and like, pulling up their breasts. Um, so the point of that is, of course, is it's, it's not, there's the immediate or primary audience is women, but then the sort of ultimate, secondary, you know, final reader or audience would be men. So women would be pleasing to men, women would be interesting to men. Um, and um, let's, Kind of interesting also is that um, 
It was um, rather popular, but apparently only five copies per million in the world. So um, there is a facsimile, which is one of a part of a uh, facsimile. Um, there's some really fun and interesting research done on this. Um, and if you've ever read um, Gertrude Millings, she is um, a very understated and devastating way, um, happily and beautifully contemptuous of this, um, this work. Uh, so she wrote an essay in um, 1942 about this. And it, her work is really still unsurpassed. So if anybody wants a copy of the article, or if you want, if you want some more information about the lady the dictionary, it is just, um, oh, and speaking of which, there are hardly any definitions. <laughs> I should have mentioned that. There are some definitions of proper names. Uh, there are some, um, a couple of poems. Um, he makes glancing references to Latin. Um, but mostly it's um, essays and um, sort of conduct book style. It's like, this is what you should be doing. So, there you have it. Question. I noticed that um, a number of the entries, as you said, are, are uh, proper individuals, right? The, the Queen of Poland and so on, um, which I wonder if has some kind of like proto tabloid thing going on, especially given that the sort of uh, celebrity centered tabloids tend to focus on, on women as their, their market. So it kind of has a uh, 17th century version of that almost to me. A lot of 17th century um, dictionaries had this kind of strange sort of almanacical um, kind of structure to them. So you would get um, in some of the, have, well, in some of the title pages, they will say, um, you know, um, rankings of lords and ladies and gender ability, they will, um, Greek and Roman gods and goddesses, um, the names of everybody in the Bible, market towns. So you get these like really long lists of people. Um, like the ladies' dictionary seems to have the front of each alphabet in each section with the names, um, and then it kind of gradually moves into the more sort of essay um, material. So um, I think it's more a function of the time in which um, the dictionaries were created. They felt like they had to fill everything. 
question also. Um, I may have misheard you, but did you say that this was a relatively popular uh, dictionary, but that only five copies were produced? Remain. Remain. Okay, I'm sorry. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was wondering, you talked about the contrast between the salacious content and then the respectability, and I was just wondering about the word dictionary at the time. So it didn't refer to what we think of today as a dictionary, but do we think that it had a notion of respectability that in, in this time as well? That would have contrasted with the content here? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Um, and um, so I think it, if I could put myself in what Duncan was trying to think of or imagine, it was this sort of veneer of respectability at the same time the content was kind of salacious and interesting. But it really, I mean, there was this kind of, um, kind of sacred. So the the um, what was it? The um, art. Art, thank you. The artificial beauty. So remember, Duncan was like steel borrowing from everybody, um, and so some of the more um, religious uh, texts came from one source, and some of the other sources. So noise does this great um, um, analysis of what uh, Duns borrowed <laughs> from various texts and who they were. And she's got these um, side by side, you know, like uh, this is what so and so said, this is what she, you know, the uh, latest dictionary said. Um, it, it was very common that, that you probably know this. Well, I think it's really interesting that even in the 17th century, people already knew in the book market that everyone really wants to look up fuck in the dictionary. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we, things, many things have changed, but that hasn't. <laughs> no, and you know, your students will say, hey, can I get a paper on fuck? And you're like, well, okay, because I've never seen that before. <laughs> but yeah, they're all so excited. <laughs> well, you know, I had them write it on craft, and that was actually very enlightening. So. <laughs> Any other questions for Rebecca? So, talking about Bullock, the, the you know, section here seems addressed to men. Is that just an anomaly, or no. is it just because the, you know, it's a mishmash of uh, content? Both, I think. Um, he freely stole from God knows who. Actually, I do know who. Um, let's see. Um, Lampard was the um, medical information. Um, he stole from Blunt's Glossographia. Um, Brown's Vulgar Errors. He stole from Camden, writer, Bullock, or Steiner, Minshew, Cotgrave, and Kaylin, and especially Alicia Foles. So, um, and himself. What? And oh, that's true. He stole from his stuff in the Athenian and Ladies Mercury. So um, he stole from his other magazines. And if, you know, there was a topic that he liked. He said, "Put it right here." And in fact, he copied an entire review and just dumped it in. So yeah, it was it was not by accident, and it was um, certainly by probably what would be. Yeah. yeah, so he's compliant to a woman because the pins are for him yeah. as the man. 